Darcy Jameson works with teaching and learning at ESD 105, and she is a tremendous resource. I worked with her when I was working in the district, and uh, she is so helpful, so knowledgeable. Her and Mike Klossner from ESD 105 have created programs or materials to use during intercession. So, Darcy, take it away. We're anxious to hear. All right. Good afternoon. My name is Darcy Jamison. I'm the Assistant Director of Teaching and Learning here at ESD 105. And I'm really excited to share with resources that we've been able to create here at ESD 105 to help support intercession programming. So we've been able to put these into play in a couple of different districts in a couple of different ways, both in the intercession one week pieces, as well as creating summer school programming for one of our other districts. That includes both consumable materials and non-consumable. So all of those pieces come together as a package and we're able to help support a couple of our districts with the things that they wanna get done and those accomplishments. So let me get started. One of the things that we talked about when we started this whole process was what was gonna be our goal and our mission in presenting intercession materials. What were we really gonna look for? And our goal in this and our guiding light Intercession programs provide equitable opportunities for students to close gaps in their education and develop skills that will help them succeed. These programs offer a safe and supportive environment for students to explore their interests and develop their talents while closing achievement gaps and having fun. Our, at the core of everything that we're developing right now is something that is being presented in a new and novel way to our students so that it's not just more of the same, that it's different, that it is engaging them in different ways, in different modes of learning. You can see here that we've got kids that are doing painting. We've had pirate camp. We've had kids sinking and floating pirate ships at kindergarten. We have technology that goes throughout each of the different grades. But all of that is integrated so that they're still having those significant learning opportunities while also having fun. So that is at the core of everything that we're developing. I don't know why it jumped to 14. I'm gonna go all the way back to slide number three. Sorry about that. So here's a quick video that shows a little bit about what we did in one district last year and how we supported that district. So let me know if you aren't able to see it or hear it. Our intercession package is intentionally designed to close academic gaps for students in a short period of time. Literacy lessons are focused on a single high leverage standard broken down in actionable and accessible chunks for students to experience success. The content from the literacy lessons is then infused into the math content and hands-on STEM activities. Math reinforces the content addressed in the literacy lessons by taking the concepts and putting them into concrete activities to increase numeracy and fluency. Finally, our STEM lessons take the concepts into real-world applications and engage students in hands-on learning. We do pretty cool things that I don't think we would ever do. There are some teachers that bring things from home and they make for intercession and it's really cool. Intercession is fun. I, I would like to come back. It's pretty fun with, with all the electrics, uh, reading, and the math. With hands-on lessons integrating math, literacy, and STEM, We've been able to prove 25% growth for students over the course of a week. Our package includes professional development with asynchronous and in-person options available, all materials, and instructional support. We are pleased to bring this unique opportunity to districts to help close the gaps in student achievement in a way that increases engagement and excitement about learning.
Okay. So you'll see, some of you might have seen some familiar faces in there. We had our executive director of teaching and learning that was out there, and we were in the classroom helping to teach these lessons. It was an amazing experience to be able to be back in the classroom and teaching with kids. That was a fourth grade classroom that you saw, and you saw some of their, the district staff that were there teaching those lessons as well as some of our ESD support staff that were coming in and also helping to teach these lessons. And we were doing it right side by side with them. So really when we think about it, we really wanna address that learning loss in that summer slide, really creating culturally responsive SEL strategies. We're talking about tailoring it to the students' diverse backgrounds and really aiming to accelerate their progress and really um, this gives them that time to master and practice those skills, to really be in a low stakes environment where they can try something new and failure is okay because we're, it's, there's not grades assigned to this. We're just looking at, hey, what can, you, what can we do? What are the new ways that we can approach this learning and how can it be taken back into the regular classroom? One of the things that we really um, feel is really important with this whole program is the professional development that goes along with these intercession and summer school opportunities. So for example, one way that we do this, we have three full days that we worked with staff for a summer school opportunity, and we provided them hands-on opportunities to learn the curriculum, the STEM, the literacy, and the math. You see pictures here of staff members at the summer trainings. They were actually, this is one of our STEM lessons. They're actually down on the ground. We had, uh, Mike Klausner's grandkids were running around the church when we were doing the session and teachers were like, I need a kid. I need a kid to try this out. Please bring them in. And so we brought them in and they were sitting down there and seeing how kids interacted with this, the staff was really, really excited to take this back and use it in the classroom. So a couple of pieces that came out of that. This, these are quotes from teachers. Today, I learned a lot about phonics. It was really helpful for me to learn how I will support students during the program. This is new information to me. The presenter was very clear, explaining the learning targets and success criteria. Putting into practice the lesson really made me realize how planning ahead of time and reading the book and the lesson will make it easier to present to the students. Ultimately, what we want to have happen with this professional development that goes along with this is some of these best practices that we really practice in the summer school opportunity and this different way of learning gets taken back into the regular school day classroom. That these practices that engage students that they're like, oh, I haven't seen kids this excited about things in a long time, gets taken back into the classroom on a regular basis. So our curriculum included uh, literacy, math, STEM, and cell elements every day. The cell was embedded throughout the day and it was a four hour session. So four hours, 8.30 to 12.30, that included lunch and breakfast served um, in the classroom for the students. Pre-tests and post-tests developed for both math and literacy, grades one through four. We've now added K through four. We'll have pre-tests and post-tests for math and literacy. Has daily learning targets and success criteria posters. Anchor charts that are created that are um, consumable, both co-created anchor charts and anchor charts that are, hey, this is just something that we're posting on the board. It includes all the side presentations and in all of the electronics, the manipulatives in the books. So what we've been able to do is put all of this together in kind of a lending library type of situation where we can say, hey, this is what we have for week one, or this is what we have for the whole summer school package. And this is what's consumable. This is what we can give you to use. And then we bring it back. We refurbish it, all the kits and everything. And then next time you're ready for it, we can give you another cycle, another round of material to be using for the next intercession. Or you could do the three whole, whole three week kaboot, kit and caboodle for a summer school opportunity. So these are some pictures from our summer school program 
where you see kids and teachers, they're learning about sharks and dolphins in this one. So when we talk about student growth, these are some graphs from our first grade and second grade literacy and math. What's important to note is with a short time period, we really had to focus on part of a learning standard. We couldn't do the entire learning standard and expect mastery in a five week or an 18 day program. We had to really be intentional about the part of the learning standard that we were going to address. So for all of our K through four last summer, we were looking at asking and answering questions and nonfiction texts. That was our focus. So all four grades were focused on that same priority standard. That priority standard was given to us by the district. They were like, this is what we want you to focus on. So it was designed and um, created for that specific district because that's where they saw holes. So first grade, we went from um, an average of 4.5 to an average of six, from literacy a 3.5 to an average of five. And this is within 18 days. So this is the pre-test and post-test that was designed. For second grade, standards addressed for math were adding fluently adding numbers up to 100 using text features and then asking and answering questions on a nonfiction text. So you can see significant growth here with the math. We went from 3.66 to a 5.84. We went from 1.83 with literacy. They came in struggling. And then we got to a 3.06 by the end of that time. So just making sure that, that the programming is not just the fun stuff, which is which is really important to us, but it's also intentionally focused on those learning standards. And we can quantify this is where the growth was. And then they can build on that when they go back in the classroom. So this was some of the collected feedback. The materials were ready when they, available when they were needed. They loved the informative text in the book. They've had the posters done for them. They were using 21st century blocks and C rods. Um, detailed lesson plans. Students mentioned how much they love coming to summer school. How important is that the kids are saying, I love being here during a time that I don't necessarily have to be. And that was really important for us. So when we talk about the math curriculum, we use different pieces. We look at things that were created from What Works Clearinghouse. We use a lot of material from Math for Love, Dan Finkel. Um, the tiny polka dot kit cards are a huge hit with our um, younger kids, our K1 and 2. It helps build that fluency and the number recognition. They play games with this, and the math curriculum is very game-based to build that fluency, to build them that confidence in saying, I can be a mathematician. By the time that they get to third grade, they're often saying, I, I'm not good at math, and I'm never going to be good at math. How can we help them build that fluency and experience with math that's in a fun way? So this summer, we're adding some new things. We're adding literacy into the math curriculum. So books such as Zero Zebras or Pattern Breakers that build a literacy concept into math. We're using 21st century um, pattern blocks. So if you take a look at these pattern blocks, these are not the pattern blocks that we used in, in grade school. These look completely different and kids love them. So those pattern blocks, we have sets of them that we give to the teachers to use and we have lessons that go with it. And then we, those are some of those pieces that we bring back, we refurbish it so that there's a kit ready to go. Um, we also have what we I would call, I can't remember the name for them, they're mega pattern blocks. So they're great big ones that our K1 and 2s use. Um, a new game that we're incorporating in this summer is Roly Poly, which is a very similar to the Tiny Dot game, but it's an, a game that incorporates action into the math concepts. So you have a great big uh, foam die, you roll it and it's five. And then you pull a card and it says spin. Well, that five spin, that doesn't mean I have to spin the 
to die another five times. I have to physically spin five times, or I can roll my hands five times, or I can create, how can I do that and put it into physical action? So we're getting that physical physicality into the math world. When we talk about our fourth and fifth graders, really getting that math fluency facts, we have multiplication by heart. We encourage them. We have games such as prime climb that helps with the prime number and factorization. All of those things get put into the system so that they can create those additional math opportunities. For our STEM connections, really those STEM lessons, it really is the connection with the math and the literacy. So they're reading for our fourth grade one week intercession, they were reading about electricity. They were learning about circuits and connecting things in math. And then for STEM, we had uh, makey makey boards that were created that you see pictures here where they're creating their own instrument and coding. Those are the materials that we, like we have a lending library that we can say, okay, you want the makey makey lessons. Here's the lessons, here's the materials. We provide the professional development to help you learn it. And then you can do it. And then we come back and we refurbish the kits and we make it all better and send it out to the next group. This is um, the group that was using what we call uh, Indie Sphero robots. So these were little Indie, they were little cars that they programmed. The tiles there told the car what to do. So a purple one is gonna make it do a, a spin, different cars. So they had to figure out how do we put these together? And then they started coding and building blocks of code together. All of this on top of learning about different opportunities to use coding in class, different opportunities to build robots, all of those pieces pulled together and integrated all at once. We also have our cell connections. So we build in those cell connections. This is an example from the student magazine talking about that mathematical mindset. And we talk about that when we bring that in. We talk, we did some activities from Breathe Like a Bear talking about how do we, how do we handle things when we can't do it right the first time? And that's okay. And how do we have, we embrace that uh, mindset that my mistakes are how I learn and they're how I grow. So how do we do that all together? So really when we talk, break it down and talk about implementation steps, our process is we identify that grade level, district and grade level standard. What is it that the district really needs to focus on and what, are they, what do they wanna have covered? Again, part of a standard, not gonna hit the whole standard in a one week portion. We want it to be addressed in a new way or format. We want it to be addressed in a way that is hands-on, that it is manipulative in some way, that it's physical, that it's engaging them in new ways of learning that same information. Not that what's being done in class is bad, but we wanna try and get those different pieces and put it all together. Then we develop a scope and sequence that includes assessment, learning targets and success criteria, the lesson design, and then we create materials, slide decks, student magazines, and ready to use lesson packets. So all of that comes in where it says, here, here's what you can do. Because we, one thing that we have run into, and I'm sure that you are as well, is teachers are overloaded. We say, okay, we're going to add something else. We want to do a week, but we don't know what you're going to do. They don't have time to create the curriculum. And we want it to be something so that we want to draw kids in so that they're engaged and ready to come to that. So then there it's kind of, it is still a break, a mental break. It's something different. And then they can bring that back into the regular classroom when they come back. So that's our whole goal and our implementation steps. Um, we do have, so kind of our process, we do, we did breakfast in the morning and then we did a literacy section. Then they had movement outside. They had a recess time, math, then STEM, then lunch. And then they gathered all their supplies and they, the buses left the school. 
So the district provided the lunches, uh, the food and the buses, and then the rest of the material was working together with the ESD to figure out how are we gonna staff it? Who, who's gonna do this? Who's gonna do that? The materials, really that's where we can come in and help support are the materials and the lesson plans. So that takes that piece off your plate because I know you've already got a lot going on. In your participant packet, there are some intercession resources. So you'll see some, a sample literacy lesson, a sample math lesson, a sample technology lesson. I think the sample technology lesson is actually from the Rock and Robots, the Indie Spheres, and some math games that are there. So we have a different piece of technology for each grade level. Kindergarten and first are using Legos and Kiva planks to build an engineering piece. First graders are using Indie Sphero robots. Second grades are using Ozobots and our third and fourth and fifth graders are using Makey Makey. Um, and that's really where we've been able to come in and come help. We have been able to help support also at a high school level when we helped come in and prepare lessons and materials that helped get some of the high school students that were interested in education, we helped provide them with materials for what here in Washington for the uh, fundamental course of study for paraeducators. So that district was able to have some of their own high school students trained at, in their fundamental course of study in a few of those different modules. So they're well on their way to beginning to be able to be a paraeducator in the same district. So they're growing their own which was a really neat experience for us to be able to help in that way as well. I'm gonna pause here and questions or comments or um, I'm open for anything right now. <laughs> I think this is just absolutely amazing. It takes a lot of the fear out of an intercession because you have teachers that are teaching the 180 days, but can come in and do intercession without doing a lot of extra planning and prep and creating. And I really like the idea of focusing on the same standard across grade levels. That is just so intentional. It makes intercession half the battle completed. That's really our that's really our hope is that we can help take some of that load off of people yeah, because we know that there's a lot on there and we want it, we know that it's high quality and it's we've got amazing content coordinators that help contribute to this and I'm so impressed with the things that they put together and then we get to put it all in a nice package and say here it is and it can't it can be really intentionally built for your specific district so that's where I enjoy working with the districts and saying, okay, what do you need? How do we take what we've got and our resources and help you, how do we collaborate so that we're taking some of that lift off? Darcy, one of the things that pops in my head is we have districts attending from all over, not just your ESD. So can you maybe talk about how that could look if someone from another area would like to talk to you about this or engage in this project? So it could look a couple different ways. Um, you know, we haven't gone outside of our region yet. That doesn't mean that I never say never. But what I do want to say is, hey, we've got the lessons here. The Those pieces are ready to go, the digital pieces. The um, consumable materials we can send you the non-consumables. There has to be a bigger discussion about that because I we can't deliver and everything to the west side of, all the time. So those are that's kind of the conversation there. But I think the lessons and the the consumable pieces that's where we can have that start of the conversation. Great, thank you. 
one of the other things that Darcy mentioned several times was that breakfast and lunch was served to students. So if you're in a district where food insecurity is an issue for families, the intercessions can have meals served just as they would a regular school day um, through child nutrition at OSPI. You simply modify your calendar so that your calendar shows these as student days. And then you can simply go on as usual with providing meals. That was a really important factor for us. So the, the kids were able to be fed. They were, um, you can't really learn if you're hungry. You can't. And when you have district of kids that have that food insecurity, being able to come and know that they've got two meals a day is really important. Uh, Darcy, your data is is phenomenal, and I'm wondering if you've been able to even think, uh, or maybe you have already done fall follow up uh, to see how that data holds up for those students in returning to school in the fall. I don't know how much a break that would be between your last summer session. And, and when school would begin in the fall for many of those students. But um, is that at all a, a part of uh, your programming that you would like to see sometime? It is. It's actually something that we've continued this year. So our last summer school session ended in the middle of July. The summer the school year started at the end of August. So was, there was about three to four weeks that kids were out. But then with our after school programming that we use for our 21st century, we've also incorporated the reading, the math, and the STEM in the after school programming. We do pre-tests and post-tests for each section and grade band that we do. So then we're able to see, and we're hitting some of those same standards in the after school programming. So we're continuing to make sure that the things that we're doing are making an impact. Do we have any other questions about intercession of any type or any of the details or some of the specifics that perhaps part of our team can answer? Great resources. This is very informational. Thank you. All right, Darcy, anything else to add? No, not right now. I am going to drop my um, my email here in the chat. And if anyone wants to have a conversation further, I would be more than happy to have a conversation with you um, and show you kind of more of what we've got. Thank you so much. Really appreciate what you shared with us. This is good stuff. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Kevin? All right. Let's close out with... David, ask the experts, or David, what are you thinking about the things you heard tonight? Uh, first of all, uh, you've heard me say this more than once, but I'm uh, extraordinarily impressed by uh, the work that's happening in uh, the state of Washington. You all are the nicest people I've ever been uh, involved with, and this is the most sustained balanced calendar study that I've ever been involved with as well. Um, I just want to start with uh, Dr. V and, and the team from Mount Vernon. Um, I believe you've been on a methodical path in the way that you've been building capacity. When I first met you on a Zoom with you and Dan, I think it was just the three of us uh, several years ago, you said, you know what, um, we get it done, but it, it will take a little bit of time. And that's okay, right? Because you know your learning community. And you're on a transition to a more balanced calendar. All the while, you're being responsive to your learning community. Involving your learning community is part of the development. And I think it was Dan who went on to say, people don't want something done to them. Do it with your groups with a focus of work-life balance. This is the part that I insert uh, I think it's critical that you call on a local expert or someone from NAYRE uh, to help you along. Um, you're not expected to know everything, but if you, you need to have someone alongside 
to, to help you. You have your hubs on the call. You have a lot of resources here that you can connect with at any point. Moving to uh, uh, my thoughts regarding uh, the ESD 105 intercession package. Uh, Darcy, you blew me away. Okay, so um, way to go. Some of the key things that I heard here, it's new, it's novel, it's not more of the same. I will tell you in the 90s, I'm situated eight miles from Michigan State University and Michigan State University studied Holt Public Schools while I was a teacher. We went to a 190 day uh, school, uh, school day calendar and our outcomes did not change because we were doing more of the same. Okay, it's clear. Adding school days and doing more of the same will not change your outcomes. I heard fun. You didn't say this, but I heard it this way. You're reinvigorating staff because you're able to hire staff, maybe outside of their core programming, doing things that are different. That's actually a retention, a retention strategy. You're actually giving a, a little a booster shot to your adults too by allowing that flexibility. I heard cool, fun. Actually, one of the kids said reading and math, cool and fun. Like what? That you you hit the mark if you if you if you have kids talking about that, your why. It's really important with both of these presentations to understand your why. Dr. V and the team at, at uh, Mount Vernon talked about focused on um, student achievement. And this was a student focused modified balanced calendar. Um, and Darcy talked about uh, student achievement and learning loss being their their driver. The data was incredible. I agree with Phyllis, and she is uh, she's she spent her whole career studying the balanced calendar and promoting it. Um, you're doing it right when you're able to do the pre-test, post-test. Same kids, same test from one point to the next. That is that is the best practice in the study of the balanced calendar. I heard failure is okay. Absolutely. Failure is absolutely okay. We should be experimenting. We should be failing. Um, you're investing in your adults when you're offering the PD. Food was critical. I heard that. Kids loved it. It was thematic based. Okay. I think that's really powerful too, uh, engaging and relevant. So I, I'm blown away sitting here about 2000 miles away from you. I uh, would love to come and work in Mount Vernon or at the EDS uh, uh, 105, ESD 105. Um, I'm just uh, continued, I, you have me pumped and, and you had me right from the beginning. Thanks. Ishmael, <laughs> I just want you to notice the sun that's in my eyes right here. This is real sun. And I'm like, what's going on in Mount Vernon? <laughs> right. I think it was that eclipse we had. It just kind of had it here for a while longer. <laughs> There's an opening in Mount Vernon. Ishmael's <laughs> becoming an ESD superintendent in uh, Bellingham, in that region up there. So yeah, is there still opening ish, or do they hire a new one? No, it's still open. Applications open until um, um, May 3rd. And so there's still time. Anybody interested? Okay, unless we have any other comments, I want to thank you loyal, loyal, loyal learners for continuing to show up and wanting to learn and grow and uh, all on behalf of your students. And we hope you have a great night. We'll be back in May and we'll be talking about kind of from a more of a state level. We're going to be talking about blending funds, which should be interesting because I know your friends are shrinking. Um, so I think there'll be a lot to learn in May too. Thank you very much for spending time with us and I hope you have a great evening.